everybody, Dave Brown and Corey Macklin here at ringside, and we are ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. A lot of things going on in the USWA in recent oh, days. Oh, boy, real busy. We've got a new unified world heavyweight champion, yeah. Uh, Hacksaw Butch Reed defeated Junkyard Dog. There he is, Hacksaw Butch Reed, the new unified world heavyweight champion. Got the win over JYD, and he's our new unified world heavyweight champion. Didn't do it all fair, but... There he is, Hacksaw Butch Reed. On the show today, Jeff Jarrett, an opening bout. We'll see Jeff. He's going up against one of those uh, Howard Hughes connections today. Yeah, that should be an interesting yeah, that's match be there. Interesting. Uh -huh. uh, the Blackhearts and Burt Prentice is in here Boy. today. Moondogs and Richard Lee, and uh, Lee's got himself a new king killer, he says. We'll More about that. See yeah. who that is. Yeah, Brian Christopher is on the card today. And the superstar, Bill Dundee, teaming up with Nightmare Danny Davis. To the expiration of time. We got a big one today. Sure, it looks like a big one. Let's get it underway. We'll be back with action. We got Jeff Jarrett coming in here when we return. Single match coming up right here. Got Jeff Jarrett coming in, and well, here comes his opponent. Actually, I'm not sure which one of these guys is uh, going to climb into the ring. It's going to be one of the Howard Hughes uh, connection. Looks like Mr. Hughes climbing up on the ropes and into the ring is going to be rushed. Well, there goes Gaylord. Uh, one of them, I gather, is going to be at ringside as moral support or something for his partner. I don't like that. No, I don't either. Uh, not a good idea for Jeff Jarrett. Uh, it's, it's, it's a single match. It's not a tag team match. And Jeff is going to be coming out here to battle Mr. Hughes. Yeah, he's the one that stays in the ring. Gaylord, maybe Gaylord will return to the back and uh, go to the dressing room and stay. No, he's staying right here. That's, uh, that's not, not good. Gaylord serving as a, a valet, a second, a manager, whatever. For his tag team partner, Mr. Hughes, is in the ring with Jeff Jarrett. And here's Corey. Thank you, Dave. Mr. Hughes and Jeff Jarrett. Good thing about here today on USWA Championship. Hughes in after Jeff. Jeff ducks and get out of the way over there. Jeffrey Howard Gaylord standing outside of the ring with his comment. See him in the bottom left uh, head of the screen there. Mr. Hughes back. Jeff up against the turnbuckle. We got up Jeff that time. Boy, what a move by Jeff Jarrett. He kept it rolling and a guy as big as Mr. Hughes it's uh, sort of one of those things that uh, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So he really used uh, Hughes' own weight to his advantage as Jeff put him into the air down on the mat. Hughes had to regroup out on the floor. Back into action now, Jeff. A reverse by Mr. Hughes. Hughes works over that arm now. This guy has some power now. Don't oh, take him lightly. Indeed, he is. Full of it. He and uh, his partner, Jeffrey Howard Gaylord. They both get wrestled. Mr. Hughes continues to twist over that arm of Jeff Jarrett, holding on to that left arm. Howard Hughes connection. A team brought in by the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. And boy, they've made noise ever since they've been here, too. Let me guarantee you that. Jeff, what's Mr. Hughes? Gets the rope. Hughes leaps over again. Comes back. Good arm take down from Jeff. Oh, he's got Jeff's arm now back again. Pushing that left arm. Boy, I thought the ring was going to collapse when oh. Hughes went back into those ropes and sprung off of there. Wow. This man is a big... Big man. I think his exact weight in that day is like 383. And he's near 400 pounds, every bit of it. It's solid, too. He doesn't have a lot of blubber hanging on him. He's, uh, he is a solid built wrestler. Comes in out of Kansas City, Missouri. His partner, Jeffrey Howard Gaylord, comes in out of St. Louis, Missouri. And they are some kind of tough. Well, they came out last week offering a $5,000 bonus, if you will. And someone could pin one of the Howard Hughes connections. And boy, Jeff Jarrett may be the one to do it today. Jeff takes Mr. Hughes, whips him up against the rope. Big shoulder from Hughes. Boy, comes back and a big hip toss from Jeff Jarrett. 
he gets off by Jeff. The sling huge. Right across the ring again. Jeff Barrett. A single action here today. Oh, he used to play. He pulled my dress back over there. Actually, he didn't. He just used the motion. Had Mr. Hughes been standing still, it would have been difficult for Jeff to get him off his feet like that. But as Hughes went by, Jeff simply borrowed some of that momentum and in a slingshot type maneuver with the hip toss, put him on the mat, and he's done it more than once. He's done it about three or four times in the match. Great move by Jeff. Oh, real good. Man. Hughes has got that left arm of Jeff again, man. Break it, baby, break it. Oh, slams away on the arm. Big Jeff up against the turnbuckle. Reversal here. Jeff with Mr. Hughes in. Good move from Jeff. Another good clean hey, hip toss. Hey, what is this? Here's Richard Lee out here. He just threw a chain into Mr. Hughes. Richard Lee. Yeah. Hughes grabs that chain and nails Jeff with it. Lee comes running out here. Hands over a chain to Mr. Hughes. And he goes to work on Jeff Jarrett. Look at him swing away at Jeff. Jeff on his feet and he smells him again with another big right hand. Well, Hughes with that chain wrapped around his right fist, now climbing the rope. Jeff lying on the mat. He's been hit several times with a chain. This time, as he moves out of the way, look at this. Jeff has the chain. Yeah, look at Jeffrey Howard Gaylord. He tells referee Kevin Christian, hey, look now. Referee oh. sees the chain that Jeff's got called for the man. Oh, no. Oh, Richard Lee and then Jeffrey Howard Gaylord. Oh, man. Disqualification by the referee. He caught Jeff with a chain. Gaylord said, hey, referee, check in. He's got a chain. Yeah. After Richard Lee tossed it in. Uh, Jeffrey Howard Gaylord, yeah, you got the victory, all right, but the way you did it and the way you guys win some of your matches, Mr. Hughes pointing at Jeff, yeah, we outsmarted you there. I saw exactly yeah. what happened, Jeff, and it's ridiculous. However, in defense of the referee, the referee, when he turned, he saw the chain in Jeff's hand, and he did what he felt like he had to do, and that's disqualify the wrestler that was holding a chain. Well, ah. Uh, well, the Hughes could, uh, Mr. Hughes of the Howard Hughes connection ends up getting the victory there by disqualification. As uh, Corey mentioned at the uh, beginning of uh, the program here today, got a brand new uh, unified world yeah. champion. Not too thrilled about the Not way he ended up winning uh, the belt, but Hacksaw Butch Reed has got the belt. Here's some of the highlights of the action which occurred last week. It was on Monday night at the Mid South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. Butch Reed turns it left and right. Look at the dog now away at him. Referee Paul Davis says, Hey, you gotta have to break it over there. Jack Yard goes in after him again. Big left and right on Hacksaw Butch Reed. Reed's got over there, but he's got some type of foreign object. He nailed Chuck Yard dog. He caught him right in the back of the neck there. I don't know what he had, but he had some kind of object. He nailed the three, gets the win. Five, 13, 59. We've got a new unified world heavyweight champion. Hacksaw Butch Reed gets the win. We've got a new unified world heavyweight champion. It's Hacksaw Butch Reed in 1359. Gets the win over Junkyard Dog in there. I don't know what he had, but whatever he had, Reed was stuffing it back in his tights over there. He's on his feet staggering. And boy, we've got ourselves a new unified world heavyweight champion. And well, there you go. A, a very wow. controversial, to put it uh, gently, I suppose, ending to the match. But uh, indeed, a new unified world champion in Hacksaw Butch Reed. Next in line, the king. The king gets the challenge, gets oh, the yeah. shot at the world unified title. It was his belt for a long, long time. 
This time around, though, he has the shot at it, and he says, any time, any place. Here's what Butch Reed had to say about mm -hmm. that. Let me tell all you people around here in Memphis, Tennessee, that you're a little bit misled and misguided, you understand? Because there's a pro wrestler running around here that runs his mouth and talks about how he goes all around to different wrestling federations and beats up on their champions. And you people are ignorant and stupid enough to believe it. And let me tell you who that wrestler is. That's Jerry the Big Mouth Lawler. Now let me tell you something, Lawler. I hear about you going up here to New York. You done beat Hulk Hogan. You go down to Atlanta. You done beat Ric Flair. Well, see, let me explain something to you. I done talk to the boys. I done talk to them. I done question them. And what the deal is, you go to New York and you get beat up. And you go down to Atlanta, Georgia, and you get the stuff and stuff right out of you. But it's one thing, it's one champion that you ain't beat, and you ain't going to be able to lie about either. And that champion is Butch Reed. Your new world heavyweight champion, as you already know, whether you like it or not, Memphis, Tennessee is going to be able to see Hacksaw Butch Reed and Jerry Lawler lock up and right here in your own stomping grounds, Lawler, right here in your own backyard. These people are going to know and understand that you are going to be a one big man. So there will but not be any more doubts. They won't be any more lies made. There won't be nothing but the truth right in person, right in living color. Memphis, Tennessee, it's a Mid-South Coliseum. Come on and get what you got coming, Lawler. Well, there's the uh, invitation from Butch Reed. The belt uh, will be on the line coming up. Jerry Lawler. Jerry's in uh, in Cleveland right now. Every year he makes uh, makes an annual trip there. Of course, a huge uh, Cleveland Browns fan, yeah. and he does some uh, some videotaping there and and uh, putting some uh, television together. Uh, I think maybe Jerry is standing by right now, and uh, and and we can hear from him. Jerry, are you there? Well, thanks, Dave. And as you can see, I am in. Uh Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, at, as a matter of fact, right back there is the home of the Cleveland Browns. And I'm up here for the weekend. Sorry I couldn't be there at the TV station today, but uh, I understand all sorts of things are going on and are going to be going on there today. Uh, I'll be back there next Saturday, but I do want to talk just for a second about this match that I got coming up. Uh, make, make, let me make that uh, two matches that I got coming up. I understand that uh, from the time, between the time that I signed for the world title match, against Hacksaw Butch Reed, the new Unified World Champion. I understand that Richard Lee has gone to Eddie Marlin and wanted me inserted into a six-man tag. He's a little upset about the little trick we pulled on him last week. So he wants me in a six-man tag with Jeff and Junkyard Dog as my partner against the Moon Dogs. And now he says he's got a king killer. That's fine with me. I'll be there, Richard Lee. Believe me, I'll be there. I couldn't, it couldn't make me any more happy. Now, Speaking of happy, I mean, uh, you know, you wouldn't think that necessarily when you're in a place where it's kind of cold, kind of wet, gray, overcast, as Cleveland always is, that you'd be very happy. But believe me, if you know me, you know my history with the Cleveland Browns, you know me being around this uh, Browns training camp, I'm a very happy person. But what makes me even more happy is the fact that now it is signed, it is sealed, and it's going to be delivered. The names are on the dotted line, the contracts are signed. I've got my shot once again at the Unified World Heavyweight Championship. Hacksaw Butch Reed, he beat Junkyard Dog, and I'm not going to say, and I'm not going to go into how he did it, but all I do know is that it shows me what to expect from Hacksaw Butch Reed when I get in the ring with him. But he's the new Unified World Heavyweight Champion. He's the man carrying the belt around his waist. Well, this week, I come back to town, and Hacksaw Butch Reed, it's going to be me and you and I understand you're spouting off about the fact that uh, I've made some claims about beating some of the top names in professional wrestling, and you don't happen to believe it? Well, I'll make a believer out of you when I get you in the ring, because as everywhere I go all around the country, whether it's my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, whether it's Louisville, Kentucky, whether it's right here in Cleveland, Ohio, doesn't matter, wherever I go, the number one question that people ask me is, King, when are you going to get that belt back? 
when are you going to go back up to the Unified World Heavyweight Championship? Well, this is it. Now's the time. This week. So, Hacksaw Butch Reed, if you think all of the talk about all of the people that the King has beaten is just a bunch of hot air, you're going to find out when you and I step in that ring. Because when it comes to that Unified World Heavyweight Championship, the fans, and more importantly, myself, consider that that is my belt. And I'm going to show you how much I think that's my belt when I get my hands on you this week. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Well, I, I tell you what, a lot of folks, he's right, do consider that to be his belt. He's been diverted for the last several months with moon dogs and all that sort of thing. But focusing in on the unified world title once again, he gets his chance this week. Back with more after this. Well, coming out here right now, Bert Prentice and that team of his the Blackhearts, which have been uh, causing so much problem uh, around the USWA in recent weeks. Uh, Prentice and, uh, and the Blackhearts have, have in fact, put uh, Reno Riggins out of action. I mean, he's, he's, he's out of it. He, he will not, uh, not be able to wrestle here for some time, it looks like. And I guess you're probably happy about the fact that Reno's out of action and all the other things you guys have done. Oh, where, oh, where is Reno Riggins? Where is Erica Embry? They're gone never to return and today we're going to knock another one out of here and miss randy rhodes and tony williams and you know david the whole uswa are afraid and you need to be afraid go destroy watch this there's the word from bert prentice sending the black hearts into the ring they are tough a rugged, rugged tag team. Oh, they are. showed up here. They won that first match when they stepped in, and they have been nothing but trouble ever since. He's right. Randy Rhodes teamed with Tony Williams, and we're set to go here. USWA tag team action. Both the Blackhearts in here. Big uh, Randy Rhodes, uh, the bigger of the two when it comes to Randy Rhodes and Tony Williams starting this one out. Here's Corey with all the action. Yes. Thank you, Dave. Big shoulder from Randy Rose. Leaps over the Blackheart. Comes back under. Sets him up and just swings the Blackheart down. Boy, let me tell you. Randy Rose is uh, <laughs> not, not a sack of potatoes himself. Let me tell you. He is a fine specimen of a wrestler. Back in the USWA. Been some time since Randy's been in. Blackheart takes him and uh, whips him into the rope. Randy Rose comes off and a good hip toss from Randy. Big forearm and Randy Rose goes to work on the Blackheart. Tags his partner Tony Williams. Tony comes in and nails the Blackheart. Oh, big forearm. Got him with that forearm. Yeah, indeed. Whips Tony in. Good leap over from Tony. Oh, tries to pick the black heart up. Oh, big drop kick that time. Boy, he got him off of his feet that time. Tony Williams, good move. Boy, the speed and strength of this young stallion, let me tell you, he can really go. Tony Williams. Black heart slams away at Tony, though. Slams him on the mat, just pulls him up by his hair. Big elbow from the Blackheart. Bert Prentice has brought him in. He says they wrestle out of Japan. And they are some kind of tough since they've been in the USWA. Got Tony now double teaming him there. Big Tony whips him into the rope. Big double shoulder from these Blackhearts and he just walks right over Tony Williams. One of them's got to get out of there is what they got to do, Brent. Yeah. He's telling them what to do in there. Doubling up, staying in there a long, long time. Look at this. Uh, Two against one. Here comes Randy Rhodes in to even it up a little bit. Yeah. Randy comes in, and uh, he's trying to find his way back with the black heart. Oh, he DDT's Randy. Right into the mat, man. Back Randy up. Got him tied up in the ropes. Now, come on, Prentice. Bert Prentice has got Randy Rhodes there tied in the ropes. They drive Tony Williams down to the mat. Yeah. Oh, boy, these Blackhearts going to work on Tony Williams. Randy Rhodes' partner 
is tied in the ropes to get Tony about halfway down there on his leg. Blackheart's up on the top rope. Ah, boy. Just right down with a big leg on Tony Williams. Right on the throat of Tony. Hey, Bert Prentice is over oh! there. Oh! Here comes help though for Tony. Superstar, Bill Dundee! Dundee comes in. He's trying to help Tony out. Look out. Dundee oh. hammered by both of them. Now they've got Dundee down on the mat. Tony's hurt. Randy Rhodes tied up in the ropes, and Burt Prentice is keeping him there. Meanwhile, Bill Dundee being worked on by both of the Blackhearts. Yeah, they dropped that with another elbow on Dundee. Boy, here comes Jeff. Up. Yeah, here comes Jeff Jarrett. And there go the Blackhearts. Finally, Burt Prentice calls him out of there. Jeff checking on everybody who's in the ring right now. And Bill Dundee in to help out, and all of a sudden they turned and hammered him. Get him out of here, Yeah, Prentice. take him out of here, would you? Boy, Randy Rose finally got out of the uh, ropes over there. He's a loose. Good to see Dundee and Jared come in there and get some help Bill from Tony right Williams. Bill, you were trying to help out, and they jumped you in there. Let me tell you something, Burt Prentice, and let me tell you Blackheart something, brother. I mean, just like Jerry Lawler, I grew up in this town, man. I consider this my home just like Lawler does. Because for the last 20 years, that's right, you heard me right. That's as long as I've been around here. And jerks like you's been coming in here, going to do this to Lawler, going to do this to Dundee. Well, you ain't going to do nothing, punk. Because I hate guys like you, Prentice. You don't have enough guts to do it yourself. So you take your big fat wallet and you pray somebody. And you tell them how great they are. And they believe you. But only they believe you. You put Renner Regan's out. You try to hurt that kid right now, and you try to hurt me. Well, listen to me, punk. In the last 20 years, I made an awful lot of friends in this business. And as soon as I leave here, I'm going to go call one of them. And yeah, I know Austin Idol real good. I can call him. And I know Dutch Mantel. And I know the dirty white boy. And anybody else that's in this business. And believe me, punk, this week, somebody's going to be in my side. Bigger and better than both of them black hearts. Well, you don't have to be too bad to be better than them. You just got to sneak up on him just like you do. Well, Prentice, you go to bed every night and you look at this face, Jack, because this town ain't big enough for both of us. And either you or I'm going, punk, because I don't like you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Bill. Back in a moment. Well, there's a group that uh, that when they come to town, they are something else. Let me tell you. Talking about the Bushwhackers yeah. team with Jeff Jarrett going against Moon Dogs and the King Killer. Oh. We had the revelation <laughs> about the King Killer here last week. Take a look at some highlights from last week at the Coliseum. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
to pay for it there, but Nathaniel Whitlock and Jerry Lawler just flat outsmarted you, Richard Lee. They didn't outsmart nobody. Let me tell you guys something. When you mess with the dogs, brother, you're messing with fire. Let me tell you something, Jeff Jarrett. Let me tell you something, junkyard dog. You guys come out here and you think that you're going to do stuff to Richard Lee and my moon dog. Well, it don't work that way, brother, because let me tell you something makes it work. You can go to the Halloween store, and you can buy them there, and you can put them on Jerry Lawler. I don't care, because let me tell you what I did, brother. I went to the Halloween store, I bought me a Halloween mask, and I found me a real king killer, baby. And I'm going to bring him out here right now and show you something, baby. Where's the at? Bring my kids out here. Bring him out here, baby. Come on. Here's the deal at the bottom line, baby. I've got the sign right here reserved for Jerry Long and Jeff Jeff. We'll put the jump scar dog on the list, too, baby. Because Jerry Long, let me tell you something, bad boy. You thought that you're going to go and have a title match for the World Unified title, baby. That's fine if you make it that far. Because I demand. I'm the man that Jerry Lawler is going to be in this match, too. It was originally scheduled for a tag match, Dave Brown. It's a six-man tag is what it's going to be, brother. With Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, Chuck Yard Dog, you better catch your blessing. Because when Monday night hits, baby, we're hitting you, you're hitting the floor, and it's all going to be history from there. As Richard Lee with a moon dog and his what he calls the real king killer. He has found somebody who knows who. And he has him outfitted in, uh, in an outfit similar to that that, uh, that Lawler had as the king killer. And he said this is the real king killer, demands that Lawler be in the match. I'll tell you more about that here in just a moment. Let's... Uh, Let's take a moment here and uh, check all the action coming up at the Mid-South Coliseum Monday night. 7.30 is when it all starts Monday night at the Coliseum. Several matches on the card you won't want to miss, including the opener, a uh, revenge match. Jeffrey Howard Gaylord from the Howard Hughes Connection going against Rick Morton. A couple of, uh, couple of hey, tough, rugged individuals. That's and worth getting out before 7.30 for Make yeah. sure you're in your seat on time because you don't want to miss this opening match Monday night. Then... Mr. Hughes goes against the dirty white boy. The uh, stipulation on here is interesting because the winner of the match is going to get a world title shot. Then no disqualification, no stopping the match. The grudge continues. Doug Gilbert, the hitman, will be going against Billy Travis. Well, what about these two had last Monday night out at the Coliseum? And this time, no DQ and there'll be no stopping it. The grudge tag team battle coming up. Blackhearts with Burt Prentice over in their corner going against Bill Dundee and a partner to be named. Now, I know we have a picture of Reno Riggins here and it says Reno Riggins, but Reno injured by these very same Blackhearts and I can tell you he is not going to be able to wrestle uh, today no, or Monday at night at the Coliseum. Bill says he's going to make a phone call. He's probably doing that right now. Going to come up with another partner. I guarantee it'll be somebody <laughs> tough and somebody that uh, I think the fans will find interesting as Bill and his partner will be going against the Blackhearts in a grudge tag team battle, an extra grudge tag battle, if you will, now. Jerry Jarrett, uh, I beg your pardon, Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, 
and the junkyard dog all on one side of the ring. And on the other side of the ring, you got the moon dogs, Richard Lee's moon dogs, and his new king killer. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about this match. Richard Lee went crying, screaming, and begging to the promotion to Eddie yeah. Marlin and said, hey, I got to have Lawler in the match. I demand Lawler in the match, uh, all this sort of thing. And, and, and uh, Eddie went to, uh, to uh, Jerry, and he said, Jerry, uh, here's what he's saying, but I want to tell you, you don't have to do it. You got a world title match coming up later on that night, and Jerry Lawler says, you can't keep me out of it. I don't run from Richard Lee. I don't run from the Moon Dogs, and I can finish what I started with him. So uh, we'll see. Jerry Lawler is, in fact, going to be a part of the six-man tag match. Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, a junkyard dog against the Moon Dogs and the King Killer. Then it's going to be the battle, a grudge match between Danny Davis and Brian Christopher. These two have kind of been going back and forth. World Light Heavyweight title has uh, as, uh, uh, passed. Hey, oh, no. wait, wait. There's Brian Christopher right here, as a matter of fact. Hold on, hold on right now. That, what is the grudge match doing right there, Dave? You must have misread that. That is supposed to be a World Light Heavyweight title match. I didn't, re I didn't misread a thing. It's not a, it's not a title match. Uh, you guys have had title matches. So why is the belt not on the line this week, huh? Huh? Well, I, the champion, I guess, didn't want to it up. He's got 30 days. The belt is on the line this week. It no, better it be on the line. No, it isn't. It isn't on the line. I put the belt on the line when I won it. Well, yeah, the champion... Uh, the belt's but a grudge match. No, the belt is supposed to be on the line. Champion has the option, and according to what I've got right here, it's a grudge match, not a title match this week. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be back out here later, and I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to get that title match. I'm, I'm, I want to be the triple... I'll be the triple champion again, you understand, Dave? I will do whatever it takes to get that belt on the line. I'll be back out here later. Well, we'll see. Brian Christopher not happy that it's not a title match, but you saw it. It's There it is. Grudge match. Nothing at all about the title being at stake. Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Tell you what, though, Danny Davis, I don't think, is through with Brian Christopher. Not at all. And would love to get him back in there and, uh, and uh, have another match, and the grudge match will take place. Then, final match of the night, the unified world title at stake. The controversial victory a week ago by Hacksaw Butch Reed puts the belt around his waist, but the man who's held the belt longer than anybody else, the man who unified the belt, the one who brought it, to the USWA in Memphis, Tennessee, Jerry Lawler gets a shot to take the belt back, this time from Hacksaw Butch Reed. Good about that. It's going to be a big night. Monday night, 7.30 at the Mid-South Coliseum. Don't miss the action. Don't miss the action we've got coming up after this. He accepted the offer, said he would love to have the King Killer as a partner, but then after Richard Lee and the Moon Dogs had left the building, <laughs> Nate brought the King Killer out again, and I think you can tell when the King Killer pulled the mask off who it was, it was none other than the King himself, Jerry Lawler. They outsmarted Richard Lee and the Moon Dogs. Richard Lee, well, you know he, how unhappy he gets at anything, uh, and now he says, I've got my own King Killer. Oh, no, he, he uh, doesn't like it what I order, but... Here, uh, here they come right here, Richard yeah. Lee, with uh, with the Moon Dogs and... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, all right. I see you've got your King Killer in tow here. And I also have the World Tag Team belt. And my dogs won it through all adversity, baby. And they were so happy about it. They were so worried about me that for Christmas Day, friends, they went out and bought me a brand new hat. And I'm so proud of it. But let me tell you what's going to happen. I've decided that Richard Lee is going to clean up the USWA, baby. And we're going to do to everybody else what everybody's done to us. Burned, broken on, busted heads. I don't care. But let me tell you something. Between my dog and my king killer, baby, any time, any place for us to sign on the dotted line, because we're ready for you. And you want to know something? This is what you've got to look forward to. Richard Lee sending him into the ring. Six-man tag team match. The Moon Dogs and the King Killer going against Rick Robertson, the Avenger, and the Ninja. And boy, I tell you, this King Killer in the mold of the Moon Dogs, bringing a piece of fiberboard in there. They brought a, a road sign, chairs. Play with fire, boys. 
you're gonna get burnt, and here's a real sizzler. Richard Lee with a word, the moon dog, as usual, hit the ring. Not much wrestling going on here. Did he get a... I didn't... I thought maybe he had a cover. Look out, Corey, they're headed for the table. Well, he stopped at a chair along the way. Uh, one of the moon dogs down here on the floor with the Avenger, Richard Lee holding up a road sign, and they run his head right into it. In the ring, Rick Robertson is in here. Oh, there goes a ninja thrown out of the ring. Now the moon dog blasts the Avenger over the table. Look out, picks up one of our chairs. Boy, he's got the Avenger over here behind our desk and working him over. Thumbs him on the desk there again. Moon dog spike. Richard Lee's got to put his two cents in it. In the ring, Mr. Robertson just thrown over the top rope. Boy, these Moondogs and Richard Lee gone wild here again today. They've got to win. They can head out of here. It's over with. Get them out of here, would you, Richard? They got the one, two, three over these guys, the Ninja, the Avenger, oh. and Rick Roberts. Oh, Moondog spot just takes them and flings them over. He was throwing him in the direction of the door that leads to the uh, to the dressing room area there. Yeah, they just take him. There them. they go. They're, not only did they beat him, not only did they beat up on him, now they're throwing him out of here. Yeah, they throw him over to the dressing room over there up against the concrete wall. Richard Lee, the moon dog, holding the world tag team belts aloft as they begin to clean up. Part of the stuff they brought in here, taking their own good time about leaving after a victory in the match. And the King Killer getting a, a well done from Richard Lee as he sends them on out of here after the victory. Over oh, three young men who were just out man from uh, the opening bell there, unfortunately, as are many people when they step in against the Moondogs. There's somebody that uh, can hold his own against the Moon Dogs and anybody else in the wrestling world. Talking about Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, I know you saw what was going on. I'm not scheduled to be out here, but Rick and Lee and the Moon Dogs, I sat back there, and as I come around the corner, here come three young boys through right through the door. And you think you're real big and bad? You want to be real tough? You want to bring the boards, the chairs, the whatever, whatever you want to call that? And yeah, Richard, you come on out here. All right, Richard. Hey, Richard. Oh, Jeff got Lee! Hey, oh. Jeff nails Richard Lee. Watch it, Jeff. Look out, the Moondogs grab him, and here's that King Killer with him. Oh, this boy. is three against one. There's no referee out here. There's no help. We need to get some help for Jeff yeah, out here. Yeah, we got to get some help for Jeff out here. The Moondogs. Oh, the, uh, that new hard hat they've given Richard Lee. They thro throws into the ring, and they smack Jeff across the back with it. Moon dogs are this team killer. Jump I told top. you, I'm getting rid of the trash around the GSWF, and this is the first one we're getting rid of. Yeah, there you go, Richard Lee. Doesn't, can't take care of it himself, but it's four now against one as Richard Lee steps into the ring, and they're all there working on Jeff Jarrett. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's get some help out here for Jeff. Let's take a break, and we'll return after this. Well, lots of action here today. Lots of action coming up around the USWA, too. Uh, we got a lot of it again. Thursday night, Selma, Tennessee. Thursday, October 22nd. 7.30 there to McNary Central High School. Sponsored by the athletic department. Save one buck on advance tickets at the school office. Jeff Jarrett on the card. You'll see Junkyard Dog, Boon Dogs, Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express, Bill Dundee all in Selma, Tennessee, Thursday night. This coming Thursday, Friday night, Kennett, Missouri. Friday, October 23rd, they're at the American Legion building there in Kennett. You see the list in Kennett, Missouri. Jeff Jarrett, Danny Davis, Junkyard Dog, Brian Christopher, Moon Dogs, Bill Dundee, Blackhearts, all of that car we doubt if Reno Riggins will be able to make that trip. Hit it, Missouri, Friday night, 7.30, at the American Legion building. Then Saturday, next Saturday night, 8 p.m., Earl Bell Community Center on Church Street. Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, Junkyard Dog, Bill Dundee, all in Jonesboro, 8 o'clock, 
at the Old Bell Community Center next Saturday night. Our tickets are on sale now at Front Page Cafe. Box office opens at 3 p.m. for Jonesboro. Jackson, Tennessee, Friday night. 7.30 there in Jackson is at the uh, T.R. White Sportsplex on Hayes Avenue. Tickets are also on sale there. Save it all on advance. Tickets all of the USWA top stars in Jackson, Tennessee. Thursday, November 5th, Bolivar, Tennessee, at the Bolivar Central High School. David all on advance tickets at Richards Barbecue there in Hardeman County Banks. Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, Junkyard Dog, all in Bolivar. Friday, November 6th, Bolivar, Arkansas, 8 p.m. National Guard Army. Back in Bolivar on Division Street there. Rock and Roll Express, Jeff Jarrett, Junkyard Dog, all signed up for Bolivar, Arkansas. And Saturday, November 7th, Championship Wrestling in Cleveland, Mississippi, at the Bolivar County Expo Center. Tickets on sale at Cartoons in Greenville, Sound Center, Peak Pen, Trading Post, Fun Shop, and Video Shop in Cleveland, Paint and Glass in Cleveland. Save it all on the van. Tickets for our championship wrestling. Cleveland, Mississippi, Saturday, November 7th. All of the USWA top stars there. Hey, when it's in your town, make sure you're right there. Nothing like being there, seeing it live, Dave. All right, thank you very <laughs> much, Corey. Got a couple of gentlemen with me right here. Superstar Bill Dundee and Danny Davis. That's right, Dave. It looks like the USWA is on tour. And starting this Thursday, we're going to be in Selma, Tennessee. And after the wild action last night, we're going to be back in Kennett Friday night. And Bert Prentice, I hope you are there, brother. I hope your black hearts are there, because Danny Davis is going to be in Selma Thursday night. Bill Dundee going to be in Selma Thursday night. And then the next night, we're going to be in Kennett, Missouri. And I just want to say all the nice folks in Corinth, Mississippi, that comes by and sees me at my little restaurant, my little bar right there on Highway 72, I'll be there Thursday night just as soon as I beat up Burt Prentice and the Blackhearts. So I'll see you guys Thursday night in Selma and on Friday night, Corinth, Mississippi, right? Now, Friday night will be Kennett. Let me tell you something. Thursday in McNary Central, I want to tell you something, Brian Christopher. You can moan, groan, cry all you want to, but the fact remains, I'm still the champion. I'll be there Thursday night, and I hope you bring yourself there. And Friday night in Kennett, Missouri, boy, have we really got something in store for you. I just can't wait because there's going to be lumberjacks around the ring. You can't run like you did last night. <laughs> That's it from Danny Davis. You know, Danny talking about Brian Christopher. Uh, Christopher not happy that the belt is not on the line coming up Monday night. And he says, I don't have to put it on the line, but I got plans for you later in the week. Take a look at what happened last time those two got together. Christopher, look at boy Shane down in his tank. Goes out. What is he doing? He grabs that red wagon that he bought those belts in here with. Then he's out. Referee Frank Morrell is out. Christopher's got that red wagon. He's trying to get it in the ring now. He pulls it in there. Daddy! Oh! He dropped Tink Christopher. Two! He got it! One, two, three. Nice man Daddy Davis gets the win in 1503. And he regains that lightweight heavyweight title. 1503. Daddy Davis gets the win over Brian Christopher. Boy, how sweet it is to see Daddy hold Turn, we'll find out if Brian Christopher has found a way to make Danny Davis put that belt back on the line. Stay with us. Well, it's the time slotted for Mr. Christopher right here. Let's see if he's figured out a way. He was out here earlier claiming he had a plan. He would find some way to make Danny Davis put the belt on the line. He has two belts. He has the Southern Heavyweight belt and he has the Texas belt. He was the triple champion, but not anymore. You know, Dave... I usually come out here, like I said before, I'm all smiles. I'm happy to be here. All these people are happy to see me. You get excited. 
Tori gets excited, and it's all happy. It's happy times when I come out here. But you know, every now and then, there's some people that ticks me off. They get under my skin, just like, I got a perfect example, just like handsome Jimmy Vance. You know, I beat him for this belt. Just like Tom Pritchard, who I beat for this belt. And now there's another one on my list, and his name is Nightmare Danny Davis. The Nightmare Danny Davis, the world junior heavyweight champion. He came in here, first week he was here, he put his belt on the line against me. And just like I've done before, I'll take your belt. I'm a belt collector, you understand? Ever since I got in this sport, that's what I do best. I win championships. I get the extra money, you understand? And now, Danny Davis, you stole the belt away from me. You stole it. You stole it. You cheated me just like everybody else tries to do. Just like this promotion tries to do, you cheated me. So what I'm telling you, they say this is going to be a grudge match this week. It's supposed to be a title match. A title match. So what I want to do right now is get Danny Davis out here because I need to talk to him. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to make this a title match because I want the belt. I want the world heavyweight title. Well, here he comes. He doesn't have to come out here and talk to you. He doesn't have to give you a title shot. But Danny Davis doesn't back up from folks, anybody, including you. And here he is with a belt around okay. his waist. What is it you're wanting? Come on, be blunt. Why don't you tell everybody exactly what you're thinking? What do you want? Danny Davis, everybody knows that last week you got in the ring and you cheated me and stole my everybody belt. Everybody knows that I beat you. Everybody knows that I beat you, Brian Christopher. That belt you got around your waist is my belt, and this week it's supposed to be a title match for me to take back what's rightfully mine, and so I want a title match. No, first of all, this is not your belt. Second of all, this is not my belt. This is the people's belt. Do you understand? Yeah. And it certainly doesn't belong around the waist of somebody like you. And it's not a title match. It's a grudge match. You know why? Because you don't like me, and I don't like you. That's why it's a grudge match, and that's why you don't need a title shot, Brian Christopher. Yeah. To sum it all up, I guess, what you're trying to say, what you're, <laughs> what you're actually trying to say, Danny Davis, is what you're laboring over is He's scared. No, he's the chicken. I'm not scared. I want to mess with the belt. You're the chicken. You're the crybaby. Everybody calls me a crybaby. I never cried. Do you see any tears in my eyes? You're the one that won't put the belt on the line. Okay. What will you do? What will you do for a title shot? Whatever it takes. I'll do, except, hey, what? whatever it takes, except my hair. My hair's, no. Don't touch my hair. Whatever else it takes, I'll do it. Anything, no matter what it is, except your hair. Anything but my hair. Hey, hey, hey I'd like to get prom uh, promoter Eddie Marlin out here. If Eddie Marlin's back there, I'd like to come out here. Here's Eddie. Here's. Brian Christopher wants a, a return title shot, and he says he will do anything, anything except put up his hair for a return title match. Now, if you'll get him to sign a contract saying that he will do anything Except put up his hair, I will give him a return title match this week. Always keep the contract man. Here's the pen, Hey, Dave, I gotta leave for a moment. I'll be right back, because I'm gonna sign that too. I'll be right back. All right, Danny is uh okay. Danny's agreed to it. You gotta sign it though. So the belt will be on the line, right? Huh? Anything goes except your hair. Okay. You agree to anything except your hair. <laughs> the belt is mine. <laughs> It ain't for my hair. Uh, What's we'll his date? Today is the uh, uh, 17th. About the All right. Now make him sign it. They put the belt, the belt on the line. It's on the line. Anything goes except his hair is not at stake. Hey, what's in the box? I don't know. Hey, what's in the box? Now, I didn't come out here to start anything. What's in the box? What do you got? Are you scared of snakes? You, you said anything goes but the hair. You've just signed it. I'm not scared of snakes. <laughs> Are you scared of skunks? Because you sure smell like one. You better watch your mouth, but I'm not scared of skunks either. Snakes or skunks, and I don't care. <laughs> okay. Mr. Marlin, he said anything goes. Well, this is what you've got to do to get that title shot this week. 
<laughs> you gotta put those feet on your wrestling boots. <laughs> Chicken feet. <laughs> oh, now what is this? You gotta put this chicken suit over your body. But you know what? I saved the best for last. <laughs> You've gotta put this over that ugly face of yours. You gotta get dressed just like the chicken you are in the dressing room. And no, no, no. So what it is is, hey, the loser puts on a chicken suit, right? What you've got to do, you've got to put this on in the dressing room. You've got to wear it to the ring ah. and keep it on in the ring. No way. No, nothing. Okay. Wait. Just let me tell you one thing. I'll be real calm, cool, and collected. You can either do that or you can leave because you will be suspended because you signed the contract. Hey, no. How am I supposed to wrestle with a chicken suit on, huh? Because as from one chicken to the other, that should come natural. This week, you've got to put the chicken suit on to get your title match. So I'll no, Eddie Marlin, no. No. The loser will put the chicken suit on, right? Oh, no, you put it on. The match is signed. You signed the contract. We all saw you sign the contract. Danny signed the contract. You said anything but the hair. And that's, uh, that's the I guess you think you're... Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I guess he's Mr. Wise Guy, huh? I guess you think you outsmarted me, huh, Danny Davis, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. I've signed the contract, and I'm a man of my word. So I will wrestle with the chicken suit on. But I'll tell you what. I will beat that Danny Davis within an inch of his life, and I'll take back the belt with the stinking chicken suit on it, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. He's gonna... So now get me somebody in this ring, because I am furious. I'm gonna kill somebody. I, I wish I had Danny Davis in this ring right now, but I'll tell you what, whoever gets in here, I'm gonna break their neck. I'm gonna break their neck. There's somebody in the ring right now. Oh, hey, leave Christmas. the chicken suit alone. That's gonna be your uniform. That's your uniform this week. Leave yeah. it alone. That's Ricky Hayes in the ring right there. Let's get the bell sounded. We're underway. Well, let's see if we can get this chicken suit taken out yeah. here. Let's make sure, make sure Eddie Marlin gets the uh, chicken suit because yeah. it will be needed this week. Let's see if we get it to Eddie. Christopher goes after Ricky Hayes. Whoops Ricky into the turnbuckle. Whoa! Big boot from Christopher. Ricky Hayes sets him up. Atomic knees up and a good hip call from Ricky Hayes. Ah, uh, Christopher rolls out of there, gets out of there now. You know, I think Christopher thought he was, oh, uh, look at that, he tripped him up as Ricky Hayes came over near the apron. He's using a fist. Brian Christopher doubled up right hand. I think Christopher thought he was safe when he said anything but my hair. I, said, I think he thought, well, no way he can come up with anything that I'll mind. But he's going to look ridiculous when he steps in the ring <laughs> wearing a chicken suit. Oh, boy. I'll tell you. Tell you what. He drives through the highways of Kentucky. Uh, oh. One of the Colonel's people may be looking at him here. I don't know. <laughs> Ron Christopher, he's got to wear it if he wants the Donald shot. And he doesn't like it. Puts a bulldog on Ricky Hayes. Got his foot on uh, Ricky's throat there, holding on to the ropes, choking away on Ricky. Picks Ricky Hayes up now, takes him and leads him into the ropes. Hayes comes off, leaps over, comes back. Ooh, my Boy, what, what a big boot from Christopher. Boy, and Ricky ran right into it, too. Got a guy. He doesn't put it. He kicks him up at the two pin. count. Boy, let me tell you. Ricky's a fine wrestler, let me tell you, out of Dyersburg, Tennessee, but if Brian Christopher slowed it down with a fist, and now look at this. Ah, uh, reverse neck breaker. Neck breaker. My goodness. Covers a two, picks him up. What is Brian Christopher? Doesn't want to insult Ricky Hayes, that's what he wants to do. That's exactly what he's doing right there. You're exactly right, Corey. He could offend him at least twice oh, before yeah. in the match. Indeed. Picks Ricky up, slams him down again. 
Drops a big leg right across the throat of Ricky Hayes. See, this is what happens with guys like Christopher. He's convinced in his own mind right now that he's sending a message to Danny Davis. He isn't. He is not at all. Rickerson, fine wrestler, will be a good wrestler one day, but he's not a Danny Davis. <laughs> Look at Ricky by Ricky. Out of the way. Oh, Ricky Hayes fighting his way back. Where's Christopher up against the turnbuckle? Boy, you can't blame Ricky. He is furious to south. Oh, reversal here, though. Christopher whips him up against the rope. Good sunset flip from Ricky Hayes. Oh, Christopher. No, he got a chain. Goes in his tights and nails Ricky. One, two, three. That's the win. There he is, the Texas heavyweight champion and the Southern heavyweight champion, Brian Christopher, gets the one, two, three. And he had to cheat to do it. He would have had, he could have had this match won earlier, but he refused to make the pin. And then all of a sudden, Ricky Hayes looked like he was about to get the upper hand. Nobody humiliates me. Danny Davis, that's what you got in store for you. You bring a chicken suit out here and try to humiliate me. Well, I'm going to take your belt this week. We'll see. We'll be back in a moment. Well, I tell you what, we're shaping up even more interesting action coming up Monday night. Mid-South Coliseum at 7.30 is when it all begins there. Be there on time, because the opening match of the night is... Wait, 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 wait. I see... What, a, what is this right here? Brian Christopher, you, you've got your match signed. You're what are you be, about to do right now? I'm about to do the Memphis card. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have my permission. Well, I appreciate it. And the hit man, the hit man out here, too. If, if, if you don't mind, both of you are involved in some rather interesting matches. You may want to pay attention, uh, attention to all this. There you go, Eddie. <laughs> running them out of here. Thank you, Eddie. Let's try to take care of this here. The revenge match. Well, now here comes... Here comes Richard Lee and the Moon Dog. I tell you what, Eddie, just just let him stay. We'll go ahead and run through the card anyway. Uh, Richard, we're doing we're we're talking about the action at the Coliseum Monday night. So if you will, just keep the Moon Dogs and the King Killer in tow here while we do this. Thank you. Now let's start again. Jeffrey Howard Gaylord will be going against Rick Morton. Opening match Monday night at the Coliseum should be a very good one. Then Mr. Hughes, the other half of the Howard Hughes connection, are we going against the Dirty White Boys? Stipulation on this one says that the winner gets a world title shot. Then you got Billy Travis going against the hitman, Doug Gilbert. And uh, I don't I thought maybe we'd get a comment from Gilbert about this, maybe yeah. later on, but uh, he didn't have anything to say there at the moment. Gilbert going against Billy Travis, a grudge with no disqualification and no stopping the match this time around. Then a grudge tag team battle coming up, the Blackhearts, with Burt Prentice. will be going against the superstar, Bill Dundee, and he will have a partner. It will not be Reno Riggins. Reno is hurt, put out of action by the Blackhearts, but Bill says he will have a worthy partner Monday night at the Coliseum. Better believe he will, too. He'll have somebody ready for those Blackhearts. Then Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, and the Junkyard Dog will be going against these Moon Dogs and Richard Lee's King Killer. And Richard Lee, the promotion, told Lawler he didn't have to do this. You kept insisting, and I want you to know Lawler said, hey, I'm not backing up from him. I'll be there. Make it a six-man. That's Jerry Lawler's big mistake. Let me tell you something, Lawler. Come Monday night, what business we don't finish, we'll start Thursday night in summer, Tennessee. And then it all started with us, Jerry Lawler, in Kenton, Missouri, going through the stand bar, going through the building. So you show up Friday night, Lawler. You know you're supposed to be there. You're going to be there, brother, because I'll file a lawsuit to make sure you're there. So Ken and Missouri Friday night, we're really going to finish. Hey, he'll be there. Don't worry about it. He's going to be there Monday night. He just said he wasn't backing up from anybody. You wanted him there? Don't worry. He'll be there. You may not want him there quite so much when all is said and done after that six-man match coming up at the Coliseum Monday night. Ben, Boy, change on this one now. Oh, yeah, they've got a change right here. World Light Heavyweight title is at stake. <laughs> Danny Davis is going to be in there with a belt, and pardon me for enjoying this, but Brian Christopher 
is going to have to come. Not This is not a loser wears a chicken suit. Brian Christopher has to come to the ring as the challenger yeah. wearing that chicken suit we had Big Bird. <laughs> a few minutes ago. <laughs> and he's going to have to wrestle in the chicken suit. I, psychologically, I would think that's got to give him a disadvantage <laughs> as he tries to take that belt back from Danny Davis, the World Light Heavyweight title at stake. Then the final match of the night. Unified World Title. There's Hacksaw Butch Reed. That is the Unified World Title that he's holding in his hand. He won it by, well, disputed means, uh, controversial means last week at the Mid-South Coliseum. And this week he has to put it right back on the line. And this time he puts it on the line against the king, Jerry Lawler. Lawler challenging to win back the Unified World Title. What a night of action coming up. 7.30 is when it begins Monday night. It is Monday night, and it is not October 5th, I don't believe. I believe it's going to be Monday night, October the 19th, if my calendar is correct. It is this Monday night. See you there. We'll be back in just a moment. There's been something going on uh, between uh, hitman Doug Gilbert and Billy Travis and... and I wanted to talk to Doug Gilbert. I didn't necessarily want to talk to uh, to you. Hey, I'm going to come out here and, and, and clarify something. Billy Joe Travis was supposed to be here today and team up with the dirty Doug Gilbert right here. But, you know, I thought we, we might be able to mend things. Billy Joe's all upset because Doug has got him a nice, good-looking girlfriend, and Billy Joe's jealous. But I guess we can't do that. Billy Joe's a coward, and he didn't even show up today. So I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to step in this ring, and me and Doug Gilbert are about to kick some butt. Hey, what do we got? We got Bill Dundee and Danny Davis. And we will. We will beat them straight to death. Hold on a second. Um, Bill Dundee and Danny Davis. That's right. Well, my shoulder's kind of hurting, Doug. I oh. swear. I swear. <laughs> oh, I, you know, Brian, you worked real hard today. We're going to put a black heart with you, Doug. You black heart? Yeah, go destroy these two pumps. Thank you, Bert. I owe you one. Oh, come on. I don't... <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bert. Now we're underway here with a tag team match. Oh, oh boy! Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. The other black heart has just jumped in here, and the referee has already called for the bell. Now here's Christopher yeah. coming back, going after Danny Davis. The black hearts working on Dundee. They're still upset over Dundee coming in and trying to help out earlier in the match. Boy. They were involved in against Randy Rhodes and Tony Williams. Bill came in to try to help Tony after he was down, and they had Randy tied up in a rope. Look at Christopher work on Danny Davis. Boy, nails away at him. The Black championship heart. match coming up later in the week. Christopher upset, uh, and understandably, I guess, over having to wear that chicken suit to the ring in that match, and he's taking it out on Danny here. Whoa, he says it isn't big enough for both of us. He's right. You got a break. Punk's got to get in there. Well, Jeff Jarrett go comes in there with a uh, with a bar stool, it looks like, <laughs> and he's cleaned the ring out. Let's take a break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Getting ready to wrap things up, and here comes Danny Davis, and you got that chicken head here. That's right. I just want to assure all the wrestling fans throughout the USWA area <laughs> that this week, Brian Christopher will be wearing the chicken suit. <laughs> yeah, the word from Danny Davis, the chicken suit is going to be... Uh, uh, going to be in play there. That's the only way Brian Christopher could get him to sign a championship match. Boy, Christopher and uh, that whole bunch, uh, especially uh, Hitman uh, oh, yeah. Gilbert and Christopher doubling up on Danny there at the end of that uh, uh, that match just a moment ago. But uh, Danny is obviously just fine. He's okay. And he will be there this week. And, uh, and Christopher will have to show up wearing the chicken suit as he comes <laughs> to the ring. We had quite a full day today, Corey. Why don't you review uh, oh. some of the action, beginning with Jeff Jarrett out here in the opening match today. It was Jeff Jarrett against Mr. Hughes, and the other half of that Howard Hughes connection, Jeffrey Howard, Gaylord, standing at ringside, and uh, Richard Lee came out, tossed the chain to Mr. Hughes. Uh, Jeff got the chain from Hughes, and uh, Gaylord says, hey, ref, look at it, look what he's got there, and uh, referee Kevin Christian turns around and Catches Jeff with the chain. It was one of those very unfortunate things. It's one of those things you really can't criticize the referee. The referee yeah. saw what he saw. There's no doubt Jeff had the chain in his hand at the time, and, and he had no choice but to issue the disqualification. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was to Jeff Jarrett, and as you pointed out, 
He didn't bring the chain oh, in no, there. He had just gotten it away from Richard Lee throwing it to Mr. Hughes. Boy, then the Blackhearts, Bert Prentice brought them in here against Randy Rhodes and Tony Williams. Had Randy tied up in the ropes there and was working over Tony Williams, some kind of bad, and, uh, oh, boy, they, they took a real big beating in that one from those team of the Blackhearts. Yeah, they, they sure did. Tough. And, and uh, then as uh, Bill Dundee tried to uh, come in and help out, the Blackhearts uh, all of a sudden get very upset with him and jump him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that... Uh, that figured in this last match here too, as as, yeah. as Bill was in, and all of a sudden the Black Hearts both jump him. Well, look out! But Dundee's got a partner he's going to have with the Moon Dogs and King Killer come out with Richard Lee and uh, jump on the Ninja and the Invader and uh, Rick Roberts in there and just got the one two three on them and continue to beat on them. Brian Christopher got the one two three on Ricky Hayes, and uh, as you just seen, just into the expiration of time, Bill Dundee and Danny Davis against. Doug Gilbert and supposedly Billy Travis got a dispute going on there. He didn't show up. Yeah, he didn't show up to be uh, to be partners with Hitman Doug Gilbert. Those two still got something to settle. Obviously, they'll be doing that later on this week too, and uh, make plans to be there to see. It looks like a lot of USWA action coming up in the coming days, and I can assure you we'll have more of it right here next week. We do uh, do join us for <laughs> for <laughs> USWA action next week. Until then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling.